Till now we saw the rise of aggressive nationalism and the race for acquiring more colonies had pushed the European nations into an alarming state of competition. Therefore, mutual enmity was at its height. But let me tell you about an old rule of politics. When you have enemies, you also have friends. But who will become your friends or allies in a war? Well, quite simply, the enemies of your enemies are going to be your friends. But then how did this conception lead to the division of Europe? You have to answer the question, how did Europe come to be divided? Well, these nations, while in their pursuit of new allies, they seeked something known as secret diplomacy. And while conducting this secret diplomacy, they led to a division of Europe into two camps. Let us now see how Europe came to be divided into two camps and what these camps were. First off, we have the Triple Alliance. Now, Triple Alliance was an understanding and agreement formed between Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy in the year 1882. Now, the fun fact is, while Germany and Austria-Hungary were close allies for centuries, Italy and Austria-Hungary were actually long-time foes. And what led to Italy and Austria-Hungary joining the same alliance? Well, right before the First World War, Italy had lost its colonial possessions in North Africa to France, which made Italy seek the long-time enemy of France, Germany, and form an alliance with Germany in turn. Therefore, Italy and Austria-Hungary, both seeking an alliance with the much stronger Germany, had settled their mutual differences and had come together to form the Triple Alliance with Germany. Now, on the other hand, let us look at the Triple Entente. The Triple Entente was an agreement or an understanding between France, Great Britain and Russia. Now, this understanding was actually a product of separate understandings or agreement between that of France and Russia, Russia and Great Britain, and Great Britain and France. Do you wish to know what the word Entente means? The word Entente is a French term meaning understanding or alliance. So therefore we see that two alliances or understandings are popping up in Europe. But what about the other countries? You see that there are some countries marked in this color. What about them? Europe is not just six countries. Well, these countries were actually neutral or they had not selected a side before the war began. Now, the, it was the task of the two alliances to get these neutral countries to their side, employing what was known as secret diplomacy, as we will see later. Therefore, Europe got divided into two camps. And these two geostrategic alliances are coming up, therefore. And these two alliances are the Triple Alliance and the Triple Entente. Now, before we move on, we should review the memberships of these two alliances because they are extremely important for us to chart the course of the war. So on the Triple Alliance side, we have Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy. But on the Triple Entente side, we have England, France and Russia. Now, as the war moved on, new countries joined these alliances. So we see that Ottoman Turkey joined on the side of the Triple Alliance, while that of the USA joined the Triple Entente. At the same time, some countries left these alliances as well, as Russia left the Triple Entente in the middle of the war, while Italy also left the Triple Alliance and had its own plans, as we will see later. Now coming to the important question, how did the division of Europe or the popping up of these alliances lead to the First World War? Are alliances naturally bad? Not at all, because alliances are extremely important in the day and age we live in. 
alliances are formed between countries to mutually work on social, political, and economic issues. But these pre-First World War alliances were military in nature. And these alliances had the one war-causing clause of mutual aggression and mutual defense. Quite simply put, it means that if a country attacks another country, then the allies of the attack country will fight back alongside the country which is being attacked. Therefore, previously, if a conflict would have involved two nations, now it will involve six major European nations, all fighting against each other and causing the First World War. Therefore, these alliances were based on the principle of mutual aggression. In case an attack is made on any one of the allies, this one clause of the alliances is the reason why the division of Europe into these two separate camps, headed by these two alliances, caused the First World War. Now, can you answer this question? Which of these following powers joined the Triple Entente? Was it Austria-Hungary, Russia, Germany, or was it the Ottoman Empire? The correct answer is Russia. Now we are coming to a very important question. How were these alliances brought forward to the public? And what was the reception of the public? Well, we see that the use of propaganda was employed to make these alliances appeasable to the public. But there lied a small problem. We have seen that due to the rise of aggressive nationalism, the public of a country generally supported whatever the government did. But in case of the alliances where other nations are involved, the public needed more convincing. And therefore, much more deliberative and much more convincing propaganda was used. And this propaganda made the public feel that these alliances were destined to happen. So what these European nations did was that they used the geographical proximity of the alliances and the long shared European history to portray these alliances as nothing more than a family affair, siblings coming together to help and to fight a common war. As you must know, we personify India as Bharat Mata. Quite similarly, the European nations also had their own manifestations in similar symbols. In the first picture over here, we see Russia being personified as Mother Russia. We see Britain being personified as Britannia and we see France being personified as Marianne. So these three are like three sisters coming together to form the Triple Entente. In the second picture over here, we see a similar depiction of Italy as Italia, of Austria-Hungary as Austria and of Germany as Germania. So over here we see that these three nations are again portrayed as three sisters and they are coming together to form the Triple Alliance. And these three sisters are very similar to sisters of fate in the Roman mythology. So in both the pictures, the common cultural links are being used to justify these alliances. Now we see that the division of Europe into two camps and the alliances that were formed brought in a sentiment of mutual enmity and such division is setting a stage for a war in Europe. So now we see that due to the formation of these alliances, a sense of hostility and suspicion is existing in the world. And this sense of hostility is being further increased by the methods and manner of negotiations that is being conducted between the member nations who are forming these alliances. This method is often known as secret diplomacy. And this is also supplemented by the lack of international cooperation that existed in the world. So now let us study in detail what exactly this secret diplomacy is. So what is secret diplomacy? Secret diplomacy is a method of conducting international negotiations or the negotiations between countries without the knowledge of the press and the common public. 
so while the existence of these alliances are known by the public and the press and also who the members of these alliances are also commonly known as we just saw propaganda is existing justifying these alliances the subject matter of the alliances the terms the treaties the policies all this are kept secret and they're only made available to the public when the war is ending nowadays such negotiations are done in a much more open manner the press often covers these negotiations or events and statements are released for the public to see but back in the pre first world war period that was not the case and therefore by the simple existence of the alliance we see how mutual skepticism and hostility is being created therefore we clearly see how by withholding information we can create war like situations but what really was the secret element of this secret diplomacy well if you remember the map we started our discussion with you will remember that these nations are neutral or they had not selected a side before the war began now these alliances led by the major nations of europe they were employing secret treaties and these secret treaties the terms of which were not published for the press and public to see they were to entice or to bribe the neutral nations to join them in return for a promise of the spoils of war when victory is achieved so basically we can easily understand that the alliance is felt that as long as they don't capture most of the european continent they will not be able to achieve victory in the upcoming war and therefore they're employing these secret treaties then they're basically offering the neutral nation the spoils of the war and in this manner they're trying to extend and expand their control over the continent and that was the secret element of secret diplomacy so if you remember the race for colonies which we saw as a pertinent cause of the war quite similarly we are now seeing these major european nations running a race for more allies now this form of diplomacy is often called old diplomacy because in the modern day and age in this interconnected world we live in such diplomacy and such secret negotiations cannot exist nowadays international organizations exist to make sure international cooperation is maintained but back in those days there was no such organization and this secret diplomacy was continued the reason secret diplomacy is also known as old diplomacy and the reason we have replaced this method of conduct of negotiations is because we learned a lesson we learned that if such secret negotiations are allowed to continue it eventually will lead to the worst of wars humanity has ever fought now look at this illustration which is called the masked gamblers now we see over here that diplomats are conducting a secret diplomatic negotiation but can you tell me why are the diplomats who are conducting secret diplomacy are being called the masked gamblers so if you look closely you can see that these diplomats are actually wearing these masks which shows that they cannot reveal the discussions that are being done at these meetings now can you see that these two diplomats are being shown holding hands which signifies that there are some secret agreements and negotiations which the other people on the table also have no idea about but what is more important than more significant in this image is what they are doing on the table itself and if you look closely they actually are gambling so it shows that how secret diplomacy was actually gambling with the lives of people and was leading the public to their deaths as the person who is conducting the entire meeting is death himself this quite satirically shows the destructive potency that secret diplomacy holds so alongside the division of europe and the conduction of secret diplomacy there's another cause which is quite tied to it which also led to the first world war 
and that was the lack of an organization to ensure world peace we have often heard the saying that in the absence of war peace can be achieved but does war thrive in the absence of peace absolutely it does and that is the situation we see in the pre first world war era now over here we see that people are protesting for peace they want peace to be achieved and they don't want a war but unfortunately there exists no organization which can ensure or maintain peace therefore so we see that there was a lack of a effective machinery or an organization which could enforce a universal law among nations now why a universal law because if all nations have to accept and abide by a common law it cannot be the law of a single nation and neither can a single nation be given the task to enforce the law for this law to be maintained and enforced there needs to be a universal or an international organization now it was not that previous attempts were not made to create an international organization which could maintain and preserve international peace and cooperation as we see that there were two Hague conventions one in 1899 and the other one in 1907 these two Hague conventions attempted to bring together 26 countries for the preservation of international peace and cooperation one of the terms proposed by these conventions was that the attending nations would reduce their armed capabilities for a period of 5 years now this term could have easily ended the armament race which we have mentioned as one of the potential causes of the first world war unfortunately though germany rejected this proposal and with the objection from one country all the other attending countries also backed away from this proposal therefore we see that such previous attempts at achieving international peace or world peace and international cooperation unfortunately had failed but what about alliances we already have seen that euro was being split up into alliances now could the alliances not achieve world peace well the in alliances had very restrictive or specific goals either the victory in a war or the defeat of a rival power international cooperation is a continuous process and therefore the organization which is interested to maintain it must also have a mutual understanding of the greater good and not just national interest unfortunately in the pre first world war period such concepts were not that prevalent we have seen that with the rise of aggressive nationalism each nation felt that they are the best now how can you expect these nations to even come together with this mindset the nations in the pre first world war period actually could not look beyond their own borders they were self absorbed take the case of usa for example USA pursued a policy of splendid isolation in which it only concerned itself with its own internal affairs and actually felt that the world affairs are a waste of time and resources. Finally we see that the existing situation which we just mentioned was further complicated by the conduct of secret diplomatic negotiations as these negotiations pushed the world away from the achievement of world peace and more towards secret war alliances so what we can therefore say is that the world had time to prepare for a world war but had no time to spare to ensure world peace till now we saw how the rising aggressive nationalism raised to acquire more colonies and the manner in which the european nations rapidly armed themselves led to rising hostility and mutual suspicion and this is in turn leading to a division of europe into two camps these camps being led by the two alliances the triple alliance and the triple entente now these alliances and their members are conducting secret and close negotiations known as secret diplomacy 
Now, this situation could have easily been avoided if there existed an international organization to maintain world peace. Unfortunately, there was no such mechanism, machinery or organization and this lack of an existence of an international organization is acting as a supplementary cause. And therefore, the division of Europe, the conduct of secret diplomatic negotiations and the lack of a proper mechanism or machinery to maintain world peace is all coming together to be a pertinent cause which led the world to the brink of the First World War.